I talk to Constance Dilly, a former editor of Canada, uh, Cinema Canada magazine, about the Hot Dogs Festival. Good morning, Connie. Good morning, Joe. Lovely sunrise this morning. So, Connie, when you're uh, when you're going to a festival like the Hot Dogs Festival, which has over 400 films, how does one even begin to make their selections for what they're going to see? Well, you've really got to put your work in, Joel. It's um, it's a huge panorama. It gives you, I was thinking coming over, it's the best vacation because it gives you a glimpse on things you would never be able to pay to see. So the first thing you do is you find a hot docs program that has a synopsis of all the films and the origin of them and the names of the filmmakers. And then you find yourself a really quiet moment where you can sit down with the program and read all 400 synopsis. It all depends on what kinds of things you're interested <coughs> in. That's really what determines how you get organized. But you finally make a selection, and you go down, and you buy your tickets, and you're off. And Connie, in your view, and I guess in the, in the view of the, uh, the festival organizers, of the, of the 400-plus films, what was judged to be the best of our Hot Docs Festival? Well, the best if you're talking about the audience, is probably the people's choice, and they vote on it, and the festival comes up with a list of the 10 best. But I'd like to talk about that for a bit, because what might be best for you is probably not best for me. When I think of, for instance, TV or movies in the theater, the films that get the highest rating are not usually the ones that I like. I've got a particular interest in um, the countries of India, Asia, uh, Afghanistan, Iran. And so when I make my selection, I try and see at least all the films that come from that place because I'll never get to see them any other way. There may be people who like the political films and they take a lot of time to see the, the films about the revolutions and the wars. There are people who have concerns about our economy and our politics and so they might go to see the films about, for instance, the exploitation of African miners or the conditions in Chinese factories. Uh, there was a film about uh, a Russian vodka factory. There are other people who just like people, so they go to see the profiles, the kinds of films that will tell you something about Carol Channing or tell you something about Buck the Horse Whisperer. So it really depends on what you think is best. Uh, um, absolutely, Connie. I, I guess there's a number of ways to look at films, but while we're here and with our listeners, what uh, what was your selection? How did you choose? I mean, you've told us how you chose what you saw. How many films were you able to see? And maybe you could tell us a bit about a few of your favorites. Well, I only saw 10, which was two a day for the weekdays, and that's about as much as I can handle because my weekends tend to be very busy otherwise. One of my absolute favorite films, and it ended up on the top 10 of the People's Choice, was called The Koran by Heart. I was thinking as I saw the title, well, not a whole lot of people are going to go see this. It was about, it was our equivalent of a spelling bee done with kids who had memorized the Koran from beginning to end. It was held in Cairo. I think the youngest participant was seven. The chap who won was 17. And it was mesmerizing to see these children come and recite the Koran. The way the bee is held is that the judges give the children the first two sentences of a passage and the last sentence of a passage. And the kids have to fill in between by reciting by heart the Koran. What was really extraordinary, as you may know, the Koran um, is only to be read in Arabic. And the um, second prize winner was a small girl, a 10-year-old from uh, the Maldives. And the third prize winner was a 10-year-old boy from Tajikistan, and neither the girl nor the boy speak or understand Arabic. They had memorized the entire Koran phonetically and were able to come in the top three. It was just amazing to see, and it gave you um, a real view on the people's dedication to Islam, their attentiveness to the message of Muhammad, and it was just wonderful to see. Where else could I have seen that but at Hot Docs? That sounds absolutely fascinating, Connie, and almost almost uh, an answer to, to our spelling bees, but I'm interested. You note that uh, the young person who came in second was a woman. Is, is it common for young girls to participate in these kinds of contests, or is that something of a rarity? 
Evidently, this is an innovation, and it only happens in Cairo. These um, competitions of memorizing the Quran have sprung up over the last decade as fundamentalist Islam has sprung up. Cairo used to be the only place. But there was also a teenage girl who was reciting. But I think in, in other countries like uh, Saudi Arabia and elsewhere, no, the girls do not participate. What a what a fabulous uh, fabulous film, and certainly something interesting to see, Connie. With the time we have left, what what other film, what other one of your ten stands out for you as something that if people do have a chance to see somewhere or can track it down, that you would highly recommend people go out and look for. Well, one of the films that's probably most likely to reach the commercial theaters, so people can actually see it, was a film called Buck. Buck is one of a, a short lineage of horse whisperers, and he was mesmerizing. He um, was actually the consultant on the Robert Redford film, The Horse Whisperer, and um, had a very, very difficult childhood. He was beaten. Um, he and his brother were sort of uh, rodeo kids who learned how to use the lasso. But um, he was taken away from his father when his gym teacher finally discovered that his back was just full of, lacerated with whip lashes. So Buck decided that he would never, ever use the violence or the, the, the foul humor that his father evidenced. And he has turned into the most gentle philosopher of how he deals with horses, but really about how we should deal with each other. It is amazing to see the reaction that he can get from the horses and the way he interprets back from a horse's behavior to the owner's personality. You'd get a lot out of the film Buck. It's a happy film, um, very accessible, and lots of pictures of beautiful horses. So that's one that I think that the people could keep their eye out for. Thank you. I will certainly try to go and see that. Connie, tell me, what is uh, Doc Soup? For those of us that missed the festival, Hot Docs is now over. We can't go and see them today. But what is Doc Soup? Doc Soup is the thing that actually got me into Hot Docs in the beginning. It's a subscription series um, of feature films, one a month, shown at the Bloor Theater, which is across from Honest Ed's. And those those films are just terrific. The Bloor Theater completely fills up. And when you subscribe, you get a ticket to each of the films from September through April, plus 10 um, tickets to hot dogs. So if you're looking for an entry into uh, the world of documentary, s go to the website and sign up for Doc Soup. You won't regret it. Thank you so much, Constance, for being here. We really appreciated having you this morning. It was a real treat. And for the listeners out there who enjoy documentaries, that sounds like quite the deal with Doc Soup. Thanks for being here. You're very welcome.